say that they have yet to find a single piece of physical evidence of Brian Laundry in the Florida Nature Preserve that they've been pouring over for close to four weeks now. Authorities have brought in search teams, even dogs, to try to find the fiance of Gabby Petito. But so far, still no sign of laundry. My next guest is a canine search and rescue specialist and the author of Go Find My Journey to Find the Lost and Myself. Susan Purvis joining us now, along with Dolby, as in in stereo. <laughs> uh, good to see you. Um, uh, so Dolby is a canine searcher uh, himself, right? He's about eight years old. He's some kind of special uh, retriever and, and he likes the camera already. So Susan, tell us, uh, you know, about the role uh, that Dolby and other dogs would have in trying uh, to carry out a search like this. Yeah, it's fascinating and incredible for me after um, two decades of training search and rescue dogs that dogs are being highlighted with this case of uh, finding Brian Laundrie. Mm -hmm. Um, the sooner you can get dogs on scene, the more successful they will be, and um, it's good for everyone. And tell me how it works. Uh, you know, how, how, how does it begin with the use of the dogs? I understand like in bloodhounds, they can hold on to a scent for something like 14 days. Uh, what is it you would expose Dolby or another dog to, to try to search for someone like Laundry? Yeah, so recently the FBI went into Brian Laundry's house to grab personal items. Mm -hmm. Um, really, from a dog handler's point of view, that's a scent article. So what is scent? Let's, mm -hmm. I want your viewers to know what the dogs are looking for. Mm -hmm. So um, think of your body, we have a big sack of skin, and about every second, 50,000 skin cells shed from our body. Remember, there's bugs and bacteria on our skin, so every person has their own unique scent. So as you walk down a trail or through the woods, you're shedding skin cells about two thirds of those cells float in the air. Mm -hmm. And that's when you would use an air scent dog, dogs that have their nose up in the air and they're looking for the scent aloft. Mm -hmm. Or two, a third of the scent falls to the ground. And that's when they bring in trailing slash tracking dogs. And they're actually looking for the physical track left behind mm -hmm. by the person they're looking for. Oh my gosh, you've made this even more fascinating. Okay, so then now um, you have your dogs out there looking for these skin cells on the ground, airborne, all of that. Is it strange or unusual then that after this four week search, uh, there's no physical trace of a laundry? Is it important in terms of at what juncture the dog is brought in to an area like a nature preserve to look for someone who's missing? Yeah, so let's talk about bugs and bacteria. Think of the human body, like inside the nose, the common cold. Bugs and bacteria like to be in warm, dark, protected places. So scent can actually stick around for a long time. Um, that's why we get sick, because we have bugs and bacteria up in our nose. So, you know, the, the swamp area where maybe he is, mm -hmm. that scent might stick around for a while because it's protected mm -hmm. by the vegetation. It can blow into some coverage. And so if he was in there, you know, within the past couple of days to a week, that scent might still be lingering around. Wow. The other thing I wanted to say is that they need to use scent discriminating dogs. So when they collected that scent article from Brian's house where nobody else has touched it, mm -hmm. and it might be like his baseball hat or maybe his pillowcase, mm -hmm. um, they give that scent on scene to the dog, the trained dog, and the dog is trained to only find Brian's scent and not the searcher's scent. Wow. I mean, this is incredible. So now, would there be anything, particularly as we're talking about a swampy, you know, damp area, would there be anything that would obstruct the, the dog's scent or ability to pick up on a scent? Well, it's complicated because it's 24,000 acres. That's like yeah. 38 square miles. Um, but what people, what your viewers might not know is that dogs can find humans in the water. Okay, so, you know, one of the theories about scent movement is that warm air rises. So if they're in the water, scent rises and then the wind takes it away. So recently I just saw a search dog, probably a water trained dog on a boat and they're looking in the water to see if he's perhaps in the water. And 
I'm thinking they didn't get any indication or a trained behavior to um, tell the handler that he might be in the water. Mm. Well, Susan Purvis, you're a wealth of knowledge and information. I mean, I'm hanging on every word just like I'm hanging on every vision of Dolby because he is uh, cute as a button. Uh, thanks to both of you. Really appreciate it. And all the best and keep us updated on your efforts uh, on this ongoing search. Thank you.